The holographic properties of water are uh, something that has come as a result of my research across about 20 years of working in the field of cymatics. Uh, initially I worked with sand on a membrane, on a latex membrane or, or um, a PVC membrane, but it, it became quickly evident that sand patterns on a membrane excited by sound were uh, very limiting, they were 2D basically. So then I moved on to imaging sound in water and uh, many of the images across many years seem to have a kind of 3D quality. Uh, what we lacked was the means of capturing uh, the, what seemed to be depth in the water uh, and we found, finally found a method of doing just that. And what we found as a result of that was that sonic um, compression of water causes areas within the water to refract light. And what this means is, in, in simple terms, it means that sound structures water in a kind of holographic way. Some people may say it's quasi-holographic, but it still has uh, the essence of uh, holography about it. So when you're seeing uh, some of these beautiful images that appear to be 3D, they actually are 3D. So you're not just looking at a pattern, say, on the surface of the water, you're looking at a structure under the water. And this has huge implications for medical science and for many other sciences. Well, one of the, one of the challenges with the instrument that I developed, the cymoscope, one of the challenges is to get replicability in, in the imagery. Because if you don't have rec replicability, then you don't really have a true science. It's more of an art. So to get replicability, it's necessary to put the cymoscope instrument inside a pressure-controlled environment. In fact, it's not just pressure controlled, it's also temperature controlled and uh, humidity controlled. And then beyond that, uh, as we've been learning at this conference, um, magnetic fields also play a part on structuring of water. So you need to remove the magnetic field uh, component as well, uh, variability. So you put the whole of the cymoscope instrument and the pressure chamber inside a Faraday cage and then, then you get true replicability and then you've got a baseline from which you can work. We have seen across many years so many, uh, in fact it's almost every day we see some sort of a pattern that resembles some aspect of nature whether it be a flower or whether it be some early life form that emerged in the primordial oceans of Earth. You know, many different forms that resemble uh, living things on Earth. And of course, I've wondered about this. How can it be that these forms that we are seeing almost every day in the laboratory can resemble these early life forms or flowers or, or whatever it be? And um, we don't have all the answers, of course. But one possibility is that sound was a prime mover in the origins of life itself. So you know in, in the oceans we have hydrothermal vents and of course one of the mainstream biology views is that life emerged around these hydrothermal vents. And wherever you have hydrothermal vents you have bubbles and wherever you have bubbles you have sound. So sound was obviously present right from the beginning of the earth in the oceans. Uh, and so maybe it was the sound that actually created structures in the water that literally structured the early life, maybe even triggered the early life. And perhaps that is why, even today, we can see these structures in the laboratory in water when we excite with certain frequencies. Um, it's still a hypothesis, of course, and we need a lot more evidence, but it's an interesting hypothesis. This water conference has been so wonderful for, for me because I've met so many wonderful, bright-minded people who are open-minded as well about all sorts of scientific disciplines. Um, and in fact, many of the speakers have provided information that has caused my own thinking to change quite radically in some instances. You know, I've had puzzles about all sorts of different aspects of science, and I've, I've had a sort of jot, a dot joining of various problems that I've been ruminating on for quite a few years, and so it's helped me in enormous ways. Also, all of the networking that happens at this conference, it has been really wonderful to meet these wonderful people and to uh, just share ideas and thoughts, and I'm sure that that the reverberations of, of all of that will go on for, for a long time to come.